Price discrimination. Price discrimination is the practice of charging different prices for the same good or service. There are three main types of price discrimination. First degree price discrimination exists when a firm charges a different price for every unit purchased. By charging the maximum possible price for each unit, it can capture all the consumer surplus available. This is also known as perfect price discrimination. While first degree discrimination is relatively rare, second and third degree discrimination are commonly practiced. Second degree discrimination means charging different prices for different quantities purchased, such as discounts for buying in bulk. Third degree discrimination involves charging a different price to different types of consumer. For example, cinema goers can be subdivided into smaller submarkets, such as adults and children, or students and pensioners. Third degree price discrimination requires certain conditions to be met. Firstly, the firm must be able to identify different submarkets. These submarkets must be kept apart, which can be done in several ways. Firstly, by time, such as peak and off peak pricing. Time based pricing, often called dynamic pricing, is increasingly common with goods and services sold online. Here, prices can change by the minute as consumers reveal their preferences through their online activity, with prices responding quickly to changing demand. Another common way to separate a market is by physical distance, such as selling an identical product in one city at a higher price than in another. Market separation can also be based simply on the type of consumer, such as students or parents, or by exploiting consumer ignorance through complex pricing structures, making it hard for consumers to compare prices and switch to cheaper options. To make price discrimination work effectively, firms need to prevent arbitrage, which is a process where traders, acting as either buyers or sellers, can exploit price differences for identical products, buying where the price is lower and selling where it is higher. The effect of this is to make prices converge and make sustained price discrimination impossible. In this example, traders buy in the low priced market and sell in the high priced market. The effect is for prices to converge. Trading can be prevented or limited in several ways, such as having non transferable travel tickets, limiting the quantities that can be bought, which prevents trading, having licensed traders or outlets, and using new technology to identify and control trading activities. For price discrimination to work, different submarkets must have different price elasticities. Finally, the firm must have some degree of monopoly power, that is, they must be price makers. In evaluating price discrimination, from a firm's perspective, it enables profit to be maximized. Diagrammatically, we can see that in the less elastic submarket, the demand curve is steeper and profit is maximized at a higher price. When demand is more elastic, price will be lower. When submarkets are combined, price will be between the two prices. Profits from separation can also be compared with those from combining the submarkets. If we assume marginal cost is constant across all submarkets, whether or not the market is divided, it will equal average total cost. Profits will be maximized at the price and output where marginal cost is identical to marginal revenue. In this case, profits from separating the market at 25 million pounds are greater than from combining the market at 22 million. Price discrimination can benefit firms with high fixed costs associated with the building and maintenance of infrastructure, including natural monopolies like gas and electricity supply and transport services. Increased revenue may add to profits or be invested back into the infrastructure. Price discrimination may also enable firms to clear their existing stocks quickly when required, hence making better use of their factory or shop space. Time-based discrimination means that the flow of customers can be managed more effectively and perhaps provide a better experience for shoppers. For example, having early bird prices may encourage shoppers to adjust their shopping times so that queues are shortened at peak times. This also ensures that staff are better employed throughout the day. From the consumer's point of view, some, especially those in the highly elastic sub-market, may gain from price discrimination, especially those paying lower prices. If we look at group purchases, low prices from children make it possible for whole families to benefit. For example, 
If cinemas or theme parks set low prices for children, or even zero price for those under a certain age, more parents will be able to attend, therefore increasing total utility for the family as a whole. The same logic can be applied to travel and holidays, with child and family discounts encouraging demand, generating utility, and helping increase revenue. We can extend the analysis to consider the role of price discrimination in reducing specific market failures, such as enabling the wider consumption of merit goods. For example, if private schools charge high fees for those who are willing to pay, the revenue generated may allow them to offer subsidised places to those who cannot afford them, hence increasing consumption of merit goods. However, it can be argued that consumers in captive submarkets are being unduly exploited as a result of their inelastic demand. If we look at transport, it is clear that very high ticket prices can be charged for peak travel, and with energy prices, existing customers often pay much higher prices, subsidising the discounts available to new customers. The growth of new trading technologies, apps, online auction bidding, and price comparison websites mean that consumers have increasing information, which may reduce the possibility of price discrimination. However, the widespread use of dynamic pricing models by online sellers means that time-based pricing is increasingly possible. Price discrimination is, clearly, a hugely effective strategy for firms looking to maximise their profits or achieve other business objectives. However, the ability to set prices is an indication monopoly power exists in the market, and this may be to the significant disadvantage of certain consumer groups. To see more videos, go to www economicsonline.co.uk